to this episode of Shonen Flop, where we talk about manga series and Shonen Jump that didn't make it big. I'm David. I'm Jordan. And this week, we are talking about Gunblaze West, and we are joined today by Josh from the Volume 1 Podcast. Josh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. I'm excited to have you on. You were requested by one of our totally awesome patrons. He's an OG. He was talking about he started on episode five. Shout out to T. Wolfwood. He's a Chad, dude. Total Chad. Total Chad. Biggest Chad of Canada, as they say. <laughs> but speaking of Chads, Josh, do you mind telling us a little bit about what you do in the wonderful podcasting world and what the Volume 1 Podcast is about? So we're Volume 1 Podcast, and uh, the premise of the show is basically we review the first volume of a new manga each week. Sometimes it can feel a little overwhelming to go into the manga space and, and feel like you know everything that's happening or what the perfect series for you to jump into would be. So our show's kind of designed so that you can kind of decide by the end of an episode if the series seems like something you'd want to dive into yourself. We also do deeper dives into manga series like currently we're going through one piece nice. and uh, less often we're going through bleach <laughs> we do deeper dives and uh, we also do like uh, volume one reviews uh, every week that's super awesome you're doing a deeper dive on one piece so you'll be finished with that in 10 years about 10 20 years we should be yeah. to the time skip <laughs> pretty much yeah we're on track to finish <laughs> to be caught up this year hopefully are there any manga that you've read that you really were surprised by either for better or worse? That's kind of the cool thing about doing it. There's so many series that surprise you. Like the most recent series was a series called Oshino Ko. And I had not even really heard anything about it. I'd seen the cover page. Yet it looked cool. And uh, when I read the first volume, it kind of blew me away. I didn't know what I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't anything I could have imagined. And apparently, according to some people in our Discord, it gets a little weirder after the first volume. But the first volume itself was fantastic. It's hard to explain, but without giving any plot details away, because there's a lot of reveals in the first volume. And you keep thinking, I know where this is going. And then you don't know where it's going but then you think you might after that and you still don't and it's it's really good what's a basic thing you can tell me about it because i know absolutely nothing about oshinoko it is a series about an idol and um this idol ah. she's pregnant and there is a doctor who is in charge but wait a minute wait a minute wait <laughs> yeah. a minute wait a minute idols can't have sex it's part of the story man it's part of it's part of the journey <laughs> she's trying to hide it from her fans and uh I, I i'm gonna say a little tiny tiny spoiler but it's revealed in the first chapter the doctor he is invested in this idol because one of his patients that passed away that was her favorite idol and so because he used to always see her watch that idol he also became invested in her career so he he vows to be the one to help her deliver this baby and keep it under wraps. Something happens to him at the end of the first chapter where he dies and gets reincarnated as this idol's kid. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much more to it than that, and it is crazy. Yeah, I gotta admit I wasn't expecting you to say that. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. That's awesome, though. I I'd be curious if you guys did Stealth Symphony because just literally it just goes to Cocoa Banana Town in the <laughs> yeah. last volume of that series. Oh, my God. But we're not here to talk about those manga. What are we here to talk about today, Jordan? Well, partner, we're here to talk about Gunblaze West. All right. Yeehaw. So let's get into the manga oh, details. Yeah. <laughs> so this manga was created by Watsuki and Nobuhiro, who, Jordan, what else? Yeah, that is, that's, oh, that's, you're gonna ask me what else he did, and oh my god, this is depressing. He did Roroni Kenshin and Busa Rankin, but most importantly, Roroni Kenshin, and the reason why that's depressing is because Nobuhiro Watsuki got caught with a ton of child porn in 2017. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's actually our second pedophile in three episodes yeah wow because school judgment and he actually worked for obada as an assistant the artist of school judgment yeah wow school judgment which uh well it was about classroom trials but it was really about looking at a bunch of sexy 12 year old girls oh my god yeah and apparently show jump is fine with this whole sexualizing teenagers yeah, I don't want to get too off the rails but I was looking into that too and I was like yeah they let him off pretty easy which was crazy to me yeah, I still remember Ashiaga Triangle was talking on the chat where it got moved because it was too etchy for Shonen Jump. And there's literally a chapter that shows a girl masturbating in the shower. And I was like, how did they think this series was appropriate for children? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but you know, that that's 
far from the first time I've thought that about Shonen Jump. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a fair point. Yeah. But just to keep things going, this series ran from December 12, 2000 to July 31st, 2001. It would have been really fitting if it had been canceled on the 4th of July, Jordan, just like how <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. we covered the series Beast Children. It was a rugby manga that got canceled the day after the World Cup ended. Oh, so wow. Jump was not even subtle about why they ran it. It was absolute garbage. So if you wait two years, we'll talk about that manga again. David, remember when we thought that Beast Children was the worst manga that uh, Shonen Jump could possibly put in their serialization? It's still probably (laughs) one of the worst drawn manga we've ever covered. Worst drawn? Sure. (laughs) There are many other ways in which a manga can be fucking garbage, as we're about to talk about, actually. Yes. This manga, though, ran for three volumes and 28 chapters. This is a pre-9-11 manga. Yes, it is. It's one of the older mangas. It's part of the pre-2010 club, which I think only three or four manga we've covered. But I'm sure as we keep going, probably find more older stuff. But, Jordan, I have a question. Yeah? What happens in this manga? So, why don't we hear about your, your wonderful plot summary? Well, gather around, kids. Pour yourself a nice glass of sarsaparilla. I'm about to tell you tale. View is a dumb kid in the old west who wins a gun belt. Marcus Homer is a huge fucking idiot who falls in love with View's sister, Sissy. I can't keep this up. Marcus tells View that there's a fucking place called Gun Plays West that he wants to visit so he can get a cool gun or some shit. And View wants to do that too because he's a little kid and he just met this cool older dude. I don't know. They beat up some bandits and their leader comes to invade the town. He leads the Ken Brown gang, which is not written how you think it is <laughs> from that name. The guy who leads the Ken Brown gang has the traditional American name of Bill Ken Brown. His last name is Ken Brown. One word. Anyway, Marcus is fucking killed by Bill because he's fucking useless, but thankfully he basketball passes his gun to View, who brutally fucking murders Bill, like shoots him a bunch of times, beats the shit out of him, and he just desecrates creates his corpse before discovering that, wow, there's a map inside the gun. And then years pass and now View is a dumb teen who's going west. He winds up in a town with an evil restaurant that's harassing the good guy restaurant across from it. View is attacked by a dumb bandit with, again, the American name Target Kevin. (laughs) Popcorn David. View and Target Kevin play a dumb game that I guess View wins, and then he gives all his money to the good guy's restaurant. Then View and a bouncer for the good guy's restaurant named Will set off for Gunblaze West with a stupid broken compass that only points west and sends them south because they are idiots. Bunch of, sorry, idiots. I fucking lost it at this (laughs) goddamn compass. I think it's cute. The whole point of a compass. <laughs> but this is, is Gunblaze West, Jordan. Tell you're going it's not Gunblaze North. You're looking at the okay, we're compass. a bunch of dirty Northers. We don't understand what it means to be from Arkansas. But then they fucked it up. They apparently kept going south, which meant that they were reading a compass that they knew was broken as if it was a working compass. <laughs> yes, let me let me finish. So, View meets a Japanese samurai girl named Kalise in the next town because Watsuki realized he knows nothing about Old West America except for how it impacted people from Japan. She's accompanied by Robert Rodriguez, director of the movie Desperado and Spy Kids. I think he's a ringleader in a circus, but it doesn't matter. Machete. The R-rated spinoff of Spy Kids. He's the only, I'm talking, <laughs> Robert Rodriguez, not Machete, is the only black <laughs> character in the series, and he barely talks, dressed like a butler, and takes care of children in a manga taking place 15 years after slavery ended. Don't worry about it. Khalees teaches you yeah. how to use Haman, and they defeat some culturally insensitive depiction of Mexicans led by some long name I can't say, and his okay, two okay, sons. Okay, so real quick, real quick, real quick. The uh, Mexican guy that they fight, his name is Gualaripa. Now, I have no clue what the fuck that name is so i googled it and all i got was google telling me hey did you mean to spell guadalupe so i think what <laughs> happened is watsky just fucked up the name guadalupe that seems fair yeah and his two sons literally named <laughs> fucking uno and dos they have a grudge against spy kids 3d director robert Rodriguez. there was a town it doesn't matter also i didn't know elijah wood i forgot elijah wood was in spy kids 3d Oh, yeah, yeah, he showed he up. He dies really quickly into that movie. It's really good. I got to rewatch <laughs> the trilogy, man. What a fantastic trilogy, dude. There's four. The fourth one, I feel like, is not worth watching. But no, the three not. is where it's at. That's fair. I would argue 3D is not worth watching. Fair. We've all seen the Billiam video on it. <laughs> to move on, Popcorn Josh. 
Some people are racist to colleagues at a bar after fucking up a stock Western joke about ordering milk. But thankfully, a cool guy named JJ comes in to order milk, hits on colleagues, and argues about how she's totally old enough. Don't worry about it. He's a good guy. Then a straight up Arthurian fucking knight named Armor Baron walks into this <laughs> awful Old West manga and continues the stupid joke by ordering milk too. The Baron is actually from Gunblaze West, I think. Anyway, he literally runs a mini exam arc where he summons a bunch of medieval knights. They all have special armor that can resist bullets unless you shoot them extra good. So View decides to try shooting extra good. This strategy allows him to defeat Armor Baron by shooting him right above the dick. But uh uh-oh, he broke the gun Marcus gave him. View wakes up and uh, he has a really cool new gun that he immediately throws away before being led on the trail to Gun Blaze West by a racist caricature of a Native American riding a giant buffalo. Also, Marcus might be alive or something. That's it. (laughs) So let's get into View Bonds. I don't think it's in the chibi, but he feels a lot like Gone from Hunter yeah, Hunter. I got some Hunter vibes towards yeah. the end of this, too. Because the entire thing is the Hunter exam. It is. <laughs> the series is definitely kind of a ripoff of Hunter Hunter. Maybe more than One Piece. He's definitely ripping off Hunter and One Piece for sure. I've never read a manga written by uh, a pedophile before that was weirdly ripping off Hunter Hunter. That's definitely never happened to us on this exact podcast before, David. <laughs> That's a good point, my king. My king, what a good build. Wasn't right. Oda like an assistant uh, to him too? Oda directly worked with this guy and you actually, there is a Straw Hat Jolly Roger cameo in Ro- Ronin Kenshin. So, I mean, it's even more fucked up that he's like just ripping off yes. his previous assistant. <laughs> yes, but um, we yeah. can definitely oh, get God, into that yeah. in the appropriate section. But to finish talking about Gone, I mean View Bond. <laughs> view Gone really good with his legs. There's a five-year time skip, so he goes from nine to, like, 14. He's really focused on finding Gunblaze West, and he really loves never actually having to shoot his gun. He's really good at everything except shooting in this shooting manga about guns entitled Gunblaze West. Yes, he likes to take his gun out and then kick someone. Like a typical shonen protagonist, he wants to get stronger, but with his gun, which was kind of weird to me. Yeah, it's like, I'm going to get way stronger this time. And it's like, why? So your bullets will fire faster? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about, man? Yeah, insane. And then apparently that is what he has to do, actually. Get stronger so his bullets go faster is actually what he winds up having. He's learning how to use the spin. <laughs> yeah. Yes! Yes! I don't know what else to say. He doesn't really have any character depth. He's an asshole. He is. He's a complete dick. The reason why Luffy works is that when Luffy's an asshole to somebody, you can just tell it's like, oh, he's just kind of being dumb and kind of like ignorant about it. And uh, part of it is just kind of like you can't really get a grasp on Luffy and what he's doing. But View, it just feels like View should fucking know better. Yeah. Like View just kind of walks into like uh, this conflict between the two towns and he's like, you just got to go up and fight against the fucking mafia that's in this town. What the fuck, man? Why aren't you just charging in there risking your life? Luffy is at least, like, in the beginning, he's at least surrounded by interesting characters and an interesting world, and uh, Gunblaze West, I don't think, has any of that. Uh, There's no world building, but Jordan, why don't you tell us about Sissy Bonds? All right, so Sissy Bonds' hot sister shows up for two chapters, never again. There you go. That's it. She's a school teacher. Marcus thinks she's cute. Yeah, it's almost like the series didn't want to sexualize women over 20. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah, didn't have time yeah. for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As soon as the time skip happened and it was like, oh, well, she's in her late 20s now. That's gross. You know? Yeah, it's, like, um, <laughs> fuck, what's this uh, Leonardo DiCaprio where it's like, no, don't turn 25. No, you're so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There were rumors that he tried to draw her, but his hand would not allow his body would not allow him to draw her over, uh, you know, the legal age. Oh, she actually would turn 25 after the time skip. (laughs) (laughs) That's why she disappeared. All right, Josh, will you tell us about the manliest name to ever grace these pages? Marcus Homer. Incredible name. Marcus Homer. God, an amazing name. Bad guy with a heart of gold that dies, which I kind of did like that he died. Or did he? Exactly. I kind of wish that he stayed dead. But uh, yeah, what 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 a cool guy, Marcus Homer. He dies in the dumbest fucking way. It was so stupid. He did nothing. He did absolutely fucking nothing. He does one cool thing in one chapter and then acts like a complete idiot. Like, he's just like a dumb older guy who's like, uh... I mean, Shanks. Exactly. He's Shanks, but stupid. Yeah, yeah. Way worse. Not competent. Not good at what he does. Shanks. 
And I just want to yeah. say the one time it's ever been cool when a character we fought died and came back with a giant scar was in Mex- Megas XLR when the MODOK parody that was crossed over with Elvis played by Bruce Campbell yes. <laughs> came back after being sucked into a black hole and they went, wait, how are you still alive? And all he says is he points to his scar and he says it wasn't easy and they never explained it. <laughs> you know what, David? Megas XLR is not a flop. <laughs> And it never should have been canceled. <laughs> what are you saying, David? I know. Legally, they can't bring the show back. What happened? Why? They wrote it off for tax purposes, so they were like, it would be like, they'd oh. have to pay like a huge tax penalty to reuse. Uh, uh, anyway, back oh. to it. So sad. Will Johnston is the next character. He is the Zorro of this series, but he uses ropes. Mm-hmm. It's funny, you said he was the Zoro of the series. And in my head, I was like, I think there's another guy who's like Zoro. And then I remembered you were talking about Zoro from One Piece. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because there's another character in this series who looks a lot more like Zoro from a classic American cinema. Yep, and he doesn't use guns. Um, And I I thought he's kind of like Batman, where he's like, I am a good person. I don't kill anybody, but I will permanently cripple you by breaking your arms and legs very violently. Yeah, that was crazy. He uses a lasso, by the way. Oh, yes, right. He chokes somebody out with his lasso, like one of the first things. And it's like, all right, I'm more okay with his lasso than a lot of the other shit that he pulls out to keep people from using guns. Because like, okay, at least a lasso is Old West related. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But it's still like, this is a series called Gun Blaze West. And you're terrified of showing people with guns. You picked the wrong thing, Watsky. Yeah. And then he just disappears for like most of the series and does nothing. He's boring as fuck. <laughs> There's a moment where they're talking about um what they want to do. And uh, V's like, I want to go to Guns Blaze West for excitement. And Will's just like, well, excitement. My idea of Gun Blaze West is that it's nice and boring. And it's like, yep. yeah, wow. <laughs> it's really great to read this story about a character who wants to be boring as he acts boring and does boring shit. Great. Thanks. It's like SWAT, where the main character didn't want to be a part of anything going on in the series. And it was <laughs> yeah, super yeah. fucking... Don't read that series. SWAT sucks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Josh, do you mind telling us about the third main character? Yeah, so we have Korisu Sato, who is Japanese circus performer, the straight man that can fight. Will and this character, I mean, she was maybe more interesting than uh, than Will. I mean, anybody was more interesting than Will, but uh, uh, yeah, she's, <laughs> yeah. She, she, I mean, yeah. a lot of these characters were kind of forgettable, very forgettable. I was surprised she is actually the oldest of the main characters. She is 19, wow. which is Ew, ancient gross. by Shonen Jump <laughs> standards. <laughs> yeah. Can I just say, I did not pick up on that. And that makes me feel a lot better because she gets <laughs> sexualized almost immediately. Yeah. And they, they make a bunch of references about how, like, th- like they're talking about how this one guy and they're like, hey, isn't she a little young for you? So I was I was thinking, oh, my God, she's fucking 15. The fact that she's 19, though. OK, Jordan, just the series just got redeemed by having a 19 year old <laughs> person be sexualized. No, I think that an editor told him to make her 19. Yeah, it's in a character note. It's not part of the actual manga proper. Yeah, the editor added a one in front. Yeah. That's how she's drawn. <laughs> That's she's fair. drawn like an adult. Do you guys have anything else or should we go to her um, kind of, I guess, father, for lack of a better term, Robert oh. Rodriguez? Yeah. I got a lot to say about these two characters, actually. Korisu, who in the translation I read was spelled Kalis, which is why that's in the plot summary, just so you know, if you were listening to that, you're like, who the fuck is Korisu? That's what happened. This series is actually fully officially translated for some reason. Uh, translated like shit, and I don't yeah. blame the translator at all. There's a lot of dialogue in this series where it's just like, feels like it, it was like weirdly written. <laughs> but anyway, the thing about uh, Korisu is that when she shows up, it is so blatant to me that Watsky was like, fuck, I don't know anything about the Old West shit. I got to bring in somebody from Japan right now so that I can talk about Japanese history. So he brings her in and she just starts talking about, um, oh, well, you know, we had to escape real life Japan because there was a civil war. And then Will, this guy from bumfuck nowhere, Ohio, like Illinois in 1880, talking about something that happened in like 1860 something. So contemporary Japanese politics. He's just like, oh yeah, the Japanese civil war. Yeah, I know all about that. I read about that. I've been following that. <laughs> it's like, how the fuck did you do that? Like, what did you do? Did you get like the fucking Pony Express delivered newspaper about contemporary <laughs> Japanese politics? How the fuck did you learn about that man he just points to his scar and says it wasn't easy (laughs) 
Yeah, it wasn't easy. I had to go to a bunch of libraries that like existed in other states and shit. It took days and days. I'm so glad we have the internet. Also, was Robert Rodriguez, was he blind? I couldn't tell because his eyes were always drawn as white. No, he wasn't. He. Do you know why? There is a reason for it. Oh, why is that? I must oh, have yeah, missed yeah, it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to fucking love this reason. It's because Watsky really liked Bishop from the X-Men. Oh, that's right. I read the notes in the back for some of them because I was just, I needed some kind of explanation as to what the fuck I was reading. And he was literally like, yeah, I based him off of a Bishop from the X-Men. He literally sees things at different points. He's a gunslinger in the old days. So he, he presumably has to see. And they never treat him like he's blind. He just doesn't have pupils. He's got glaucoma that doesn't affect him. It's from years of using, you know, this manga's version of hockey. I guess whatever whatever they call it hockey oh uh, T Wolfwood he's Canadian there you go <laughs> Canadian one piece <laughs> for the, <laughs> the hockey yeah hockey <laughs> instead of gold Roger it's Wayne Gretzky there you yeah. go yeah he was the best there ever was <laughs> the best there the best there ever was I was actually reading someone like on Reddit was like are there any like mutants that play sports because their powers have nothing to do with it and I was thinking about how Wayne Gretzky if he exists in the MCU people definitely would think he had some super sort of superpower notice how we're doing our best to talk about anything besides Gunblaze <laughs> West listener yes Jordan why don't you tell us about the armor baron the final boss of this series Holy shit, just in the middle of this Old West manga, a fucking, like, fantasy medieval knight with futuristic armor just shows up for absolutely, like, no reason in the middle of nowhere. It's amazing. He shows up, and he apparently is like, I could take you to Gunblaze West. I am from there. And apparently, reading the notes, this is literally a design that Watsky came up with while he was was writing uh Roroni Kenshin and then while he was writing Gunblaze West he completely ran out of ideas so just grabbed a design he had that he really liked and he really likes this design which I don't get because it's fucking stupid and generic and lame there's like seven chapters about this fight like I think there's at least a solid volume of just fighting this dude this goes on so long he wanted to be done he was completely out of his element he was like I don't know what to do here and there's super science in this series as well, by the way. Yeah. Where people have missiles and arms, robot arms and shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, David, David, don't forget um, his uh, <laughs> mechanical gun sack. Oh, that he definitely needed to keep calling a sack. Yeah. That's in the official translation. They called it a gun sack. Yes. <laughs> Though I know we really want to tear into this, so why don't we migrate properly into why it failed? I will kick this off by letting Jordan start this conversation. Hell yeah. This series fucking sucks. Yeah, it's it's not great. <laughs> Huge thing here. Watsky wants to have a lot of things both ways, especially with regards to Robert Rodriguez, which is a character that he fucked up so horribly. Here's the thing. Robert Rodriguez, uh, the director of Machete, he's the only black character in the entire series. They mention over and over again, hey, this is uh, this is literally the year 1880, which, as I mentioned in the plot summary, is 15 years after slavery was abolished. So he has this mute character, almost mute, who doesn't talk much until like the second chapter that he's in. And he's this huge, laconic black man. And the clothes he's wearing literally literally looks like a butler and all he does is basically look after the children like on one hand you want to be like oh well this is disconnected from real life history but you can't say that because Watsky then starts having a Japanese character talk about real life Japanese politics and they mention the civil war by name yep so it's like oh well clearly slavery did happen so I'm looking at this guy and I'm just like was he not freed what are you doing here man are you sure he's black and not just a dark-skinned hispanic person i mean jordan's like shit <laughs> yeah he's yes! like fuck i did not think about that <laughs> yeah i think he's meant to be black because he's based on bishop david he's literally okay, explicitly fair. based on bishop this is rook like they show him in the past before he decided to shave his head or whatever, I guess. And he does have dreadlocks, I'm pretty sure. So no, I'm pretty certain he's meant to be black. OK, OK. Like there's one line where Kalise is talking about her struggles and somebody says, wow, that's horrible. Human trafficking is a terrible sin of the past. And it's like, yeah, 15 years ago. Yeah. Racism's over. Yeah. 
It's over, yeah. Long past, you know? Only 15 fucking years ago. Yeah, yeah. God. Oh. yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like, you know, he had a good grasp on, like, you know, American culture at all. I think there was even a note in the very beginning where he said something along the lines of, like, yeah, I went to America, and the most interesting place that I visited was this desert, and I thought cactuses were pretty funny. And that was his, like, I guess, reason for wanting to set a story here. Yeah. Can you imagine a shonen battle manga that has to talk about slavery in the Civil War? Oh, my God. Coming from a Japanese person who probably didn't <laughs> even know about the Civil War until he started researching for the series. Which, who knows if he, if he even researched at all. His research was, he watched Hateful Eight, that was the yeah, whole thing. he watched Tombstone. Or no, he would no, he would have gotten a better idea about this stuff if he watched Hateful Eight. I take it back. Exactly. Oh yeah, and that wasn't out anyway, never mind. But the big issue with this series, the absolute biggest problem, is that you can't make this kind of series with guns. Or at least you have to be smarter with it. Because a huge difference between the two, a sword fight and a gun fight, is that the fighting in a samurai movie is like dancing. Like, there's a lot of cool action and stuff, but in a Western, it's about the tension. It's about the before and after the fighting starts. Because the whole thing that happens with a Western is that the actual conflict lasts for like one second. Yeah. But it's like the build up and fallout of it is just so good. Problem here is Watsky can't do that. So he has all these fights where they're basically having like karate fights but one character has a gun that he never fucking uses i mean you see that very blatantly i think that's a beautiful point thank you because what is the moral of this i mean if you if you're creating a, a series that's supposed to be for a younger you know demographic if they want to idolize their hero they're like i want to get a revolver just like my hero from this series you know it's just such a weird thing to like revolve a whole story around like guns like he doesn't have creative workarounds to this problem at all the seeing that the characters hit each other or kick each other when they have weapons i mean it is just like the craziest thing ever it's like how, like, in X-Men cartoons, Wolverine can't decapitate people, so he punches people with his claws. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, or the old Spider-Man cartoon where they literally forbade Spider-Man from punching anybody and nobody noticed. <laughs> it's actually really impressive. That's what happens when you have talented people working with restrictions like this. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But anyway, again, we're doing everything we can not to talk about Gunplay's web. <laughs> Let's be good about this until Miss Lane's off. So I want to point out how fucking slow this pacing is. How did they make Romance yes. Dawn five chapters? They had two separate training arcs. And you know what's a crazy statistic? So this series ran for 28 chapters. Jordan, guess what chapter of One Piece Sanji shows up? What? Chapter 20. Really? They were Happened. at Barati by chapter 20. Yeah, one of the things I noticed was he extended the Romance Dawn subplot to like chapter six and added absolutely nothing. There is nothing in those extra chapters that contributes at all to the series, not even remotely. The pacing is horrible. It's too cookie cutter. It's too generic. It's not even trying to be different in, in any way. And the destination that they're going to, when they reveal that this like destination, this place, Gunblaze West, it sounds like the most uninteresting destination for anybody. To, why do I even care that he gets there? I don't care about even seeing anything about Gunblaze West. I fucked up, by the way. Sorry. Uh, when I said Sanjay, I was saying Usopp. Usopp's first appearance is chapter 23. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Okay. <laughs> still, to get to Usopp in 23 chapters. But still. They completely did, you know, three full arcs more or less in the same amount of time the series did nothing. By the way, David, I'm pretty sure, I swear to God, Watsky like traced one of his shield guns. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For like one of the characters hat guns, sombrero guns or whatever. Like it looks identical. That sounds about right. You don't want to talk about pacing too. the first chapter because like, where <laughs> I read it, there was like chapter one and chapter 1.1. 1. 1, and, and it was like a varying you know version of the same chapter. But the first chapter itself was like very long. I had a good sense that it was going to be bad, but I didn't feel like I had a good sense for this character or what was going to be happening or what I was supposed to care about from the first chapter, which was already a big red flag. Nothing mattered. Yeah. There's no interesting characters in this series except for Robert Rodriguez. Yeah, and just in name. This series made me into a uh, Second Amendment advocate because <laughs> yeah. the entirety of this series, I'm just like, buy a gun, shoot him. Why aren't you shooting him right now? You have a gun. Oh my God, this lib, this fucking lib just won't shoot this guy. Absolutely annoying. You can kind of see the direction it would have gone if it would have continued. Towards the end, like he does try to start doing things with like different types of bullets that, that have spirals on them. And he, the spin. The spin. 
dumb as shit. You know, bullets already spin, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This one spin better. <laughs> yeah, but not this way. Because he drew a spiral on it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Watsky doesn't know what the term rifling means, by the way. I just know. I assume that this main character's power-ups would have just been him getting different bullets. That could have actually been cool. I mean, cooler than, yeah. It would have been something. Also, I want to point out that the whole armor thing doesn't make any sense because you still feel the kinetic impact of the bullet, which is going to break your bones. That's why Kevlar isn't just bulletproof. It intentionally designed to break after it gets shot to mm. dissipate the kinetic energy of the bullet. You cannot make multi-usable armor against bullets. David, the entire reason why nobody wear, why suits of armor stopped existing was because guns were invented. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't care how many medieval knights you have. If you have like a, an army of knights and like an okay sized posse of people with guns, the people with guns are going to win. There are so many stories of like a ton of knights just getting their shit wrecked by like a bunch of archers hanging out in a tower. Yeah. You're also creating a universe in where it's like not even knights and armor with like one kind of basic gun. There are people with pretty advanced guns. Like there's like Gatling, like rocket launching guns at some point. So it's like it's not even like a basic. He's a fucking Baron von Stroheim in this <laughs> yeah, goddamn yeah. comic. Yeah. He has like a rocket in his knee. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Jordan, can you believe it? This is the second <laughs> pedophile created manga where colors are extremely important in a black and white medium. For reference, Josh, the Build King power system is based on colors. See, I did yes. not even get that. Yeah. Yeah. And this one is like, oh, the color of your Gunplay's West logo is super important. We can't fucking tell what colors these are. Yeah. Yeah. I skimmed right past that shit. There's so much dialogue that's pointless where they're talking about the fucking Gunsplay's West emblem. What the fuck does this shit mean? I don't care. This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're right. You're completely right. You're completely right. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, but let's channel that energy positively as we do have to say some nice things as we are contractually required by Josh's agent. So let's get <laughs> into the positives. So speaking of colors, actually, I think this series did a really great job with its black tone. There are some really nice uses of black backgrounds for dramatic effect. Kind of reminded me of how those kind of, you know, when Cop and Dolphin or Hungry Marie, the artist, really put in a lot of energy. And you can see that in it where he really had some dedicated black tones in the art that just looked cool. Yeah, I'm going to ignore the entire premise of this uh, of this part because I can't think of a single positive fucking thing. To Jordan, say about you really can't think of a single positive. <laughs> Here's one. I will point out that in the notes, Watsky acknowledges and is fully aware of the fact that this series sucks. And he says, damn, I really fucked up with this series. Yeah. His sophomore slump. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, Buso Rankin also sucked. Yeah. I, my brother loved that series and I did not. Buso Rankin sucked, but it was better than this. Yeah. Buso Rankin was the first manga I ever dropped. But yeah, but Josh, do you, do you have any positives? I have like two or three more, but I can just list them off if we just want to keep going. I want to say the character designs were cool, but they really weren't. I, I want no, to say that, they weren't. that the no. paneling was cool, but it, it really kind of wasn't. I see what you're talking about, about the use of the blacks that he had in there. And, and... By the way, David, you are reaching with that, and you know that you are reaching. You are fully aware of how huge of a reach that is by saying that the black tones in a series are cool. Holy shit. I thought there was some interesting use of having completely black backgrounds for dramatic effect. In any other series where you weren't struggling to find positives, you would be listing that as an example of the artist being lazy as fuck. And you know you would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just putting that out there for the listener. You know that it's true. I think I like this series more than you somehow. <laughs> I clearly fucking loathe this thing. I can tell. I do think this series should at least get credit for doing cowboy manga, which I don't think I've ever read a cowboy manga before. It did do it well, but at least it's something that hasn't been done before. Trigun! Yeah. Besides Trigun. Trigun eats this series' lunch so fucking hard. Yeah, without a doubt. Because for one thing, Trigun, the whole point of Vash's character is that he doesn't kill people with his guns. That's like the conflict. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah. Fine. My last positive I will say, and then we'll move on to where it could have gone, is I think at least the paneling wasn't as lazy as we've seen in other manga, where it wasn't just all squares all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They were angled shots of close ups of the <laughs> eyes of a character so he didn't have to draw the whole face. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes, fine. that did happen a lot in this series. Man, there sure are a lot of great angles of the backs of characters' heads. This is cool. Yeah. Wow. Fine, fine, fine. Whatever. <laughs> Let's go to where it could have gone. All right, Jordan, tell us, partner, how would you have fixed this series? 
first of all, the frustrating thing about the series is that there's clearly a premise here. If you told me this in 2016, before anybody knew about the charges with Watsky, if you were like, hey, hey, Jordan, the guy who made Roni Kenshin, you know, that samurai manga you like, well, he's going to make a, a gunslinger manga. And I'm like, wow, that sounds swell. I bet that's going to turn out just good. And no, it really doesn't because it's just, I don't know what the fuck was going on here, man. He just had nothing. He had no fucking ideas. He had a genre and that that was it. Like he yeah. had a setting and he was like, ah, the rest writes itself. And then it didn't. And then it didn't. Yeah. So the, what would you have changed about this to have made the series at least not atrocious? I either would have connected it more to the historical Old West, or I would have just straight up made it into like a Pokemon world with absolutely no connection. The Old West is a very politically charged time with a lot of really complicated things happening. And Watsky does not know a single thing about it. Completely ignorant of it. Like, how do you not make this weird West from the start, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's the fun. You don't have to be in the world where there was the Civil War and have to worry about, you know, being someone who's not even American, not trying not to be racist when showing, you know. Especially when it serves no purpose None. outside of that one moment. It never has anything to do with anything else that's happening in the plot. So it doesn't even need to exist in the same world. It really comes off like Watsky was like, yeah, you know, the oh, the Old West, that was cool. Yeah, they had slaves. Ah, that was interesting. Isn't that a funny quirk of life in the Old West? And it's like, no. No, slavery is not cool. It's not. Not at all. It's so weird because there's a couple moments in this series where he seems to address racism, which just makes the whole thing worse because it's like, okay, so you're aware that it exists. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's funny because we're like, where it could have gone. I think it could have gone right into the fucking toilet after the first chapter. It's fucking gone. He did kind of say something similar where he said, uh, you know, they didn't give me time or there was like some event yeah. that I was like trying to prep for and they moved the event. So I had to like rush it and no one even looked yeah. at the first draft. And so I just kind of like, did whatever I wanted to do. I mean, let's just say he was preparing for 9 11. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> all right. I had one last idea. What if the main character, so he uses his legs all the time. What if he only could use his legs? Like, what if he had like a physical disability with his hands or arm where he couldn't shoot a gun? And that's why he doesn't shoot people in the series. I love that it's the reverse of Johnny <laughs> from, <laughs> from Steel Ball Run. Yeah, it's the reverse Johnny Joe Star. <laughs> I love that. Like, oh my God, yes. Because David, the way that you do that is that you make it so that even though he can't use his arms, he still uses his guns <laughs> yeah. with like his feet yeah. or like yeah. his teeth or something. Like, no, that's that's how you do that. And that's good. I like that. You fixed it. Oh, well, I like you, buddy. Thank you. All right, but you know what else I like doing? It's talking Aww. about miscellaneous thoughts. So let's go to that. Josh, please, our honored guest, can you take us away with what were some miscellaneous thoughts that you were so excited to talk about? Like we said in the beginning, it's cookie cutter, romance, dawn, one piece meets like Hunter. At the beginning, it's one piece. At the end, it's Hunter. There was nothing different about it. There was nothing special about it. There was no to bring it back to the historical side of things. Didn't need to exist in a historically accurate world. Like it could have just been its own separate world. Yeah. The, the characters were so just bland cookie cutter. I mean, they were we compare them to Gone because there's homage, right? There's inspiration. You can be inspired by something. But this is just like these characters have different skins on them, just picked up from their series yeah. and dropped into a far less interesting world. Yeah. Gunblaze West, like, I don't even really know, like, why people want to go there so bad or, like, what is... The, no. Like, what's the point yeah. of this place even existing? I should want to see what's there and, like, I should want the hero to get there to achieve something. But again, he wants to get stronger by just being able to shoot better. And that was also, like, so weird to me to say, like, in a shonen that is directed towards a younger demographic, I want to teach them that they can be strong with guns. Like, it was just so bizarre and such a weird choice that, to have this be the main tool that this character uses yeah this is a bizarre adventure <laughs> yeah, yeah in terms of my miscellaneous thoughts i want to point out in chapter two someone gets kicked in the head by a horse which should have killed them instantly yeah yes that series would have gotten a lot of respect <laughs> he actually died by being kicked in the head by a horse <laughs> But I think the real thing that stands out to me is why did everyone wear gloves? This is like a Sonic the Hedgehog situation where they just arbitrarily all are wearing gloves at all times he said that but you know between the chapters he said like <sighs> who reads that I can't figure out the main character's hair and people keep telling me that it keeps changing. I can't figure it out. I don't like it, but I do like his gloves. And that's like, he kind of left it there. <laughs> so he's got a hand fetish. He's like Kira. <laughs> yeah. Great. That's, that's wonderful. One more fetish to learn about from him. That's <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. How about you, Jordan? Didn't you have like a list of quotes you want to read off? 
Oh yeah, here we go, here we go. Here's here's just one line. His skills were worthy of proclaiming him a hero, but because of his cruel and excessively brutal style of combat, he was never proclaimed a hero. Gunblaze West would never accept a man like you that takes joy in violence. Oh wow, like a, a place called Gunblaze West. Murder weapon fire West. Yeah. Does not like people who enjoy violence. Didn't at one point they set up like Gunblaze West to be this like sanctuary, this place of peace. They value education and farming. The Gunblaze West I'm seeking isn't worthless. And there are <laughs> others who seek it that also feel that it isn't worthless. And apparently there's an arena in Gunblaze West. Oh, yeah, we get that as like a final reveal. Fuck it. We see a drawing of the Roman Coliseum, like just the Roman Coliseum. like Built into the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's fucking. All right. Final verdict time. I need to talk about the, something really important here. Okay. The joke that they fucked up about milk in a bar, because I have seen other Japanese authors fuck this exact joke up in this exact same way. And it's my favorite thing. There's like a stock scene in a lot of Western movies. Like you see it in like a billion old ones where like they're at a bar and this one dude walks in and he orders milk and everybody around them starts like snickering. And the joke is that, oh, wow, this guy walked into a bar and ordered a non-alcoholic drink. OK, like he must be some kind of pansy or whatever because he didn't get whiskey but japanese authors or at least the ones that i've read who have attempted this do not understand that the joke is he isn't ordering whiskey they think that the joke is that he's ordering milk because milk is a drink for little babies yeah. so in this comic they all order coffee <laughs> yeah but the girl orders coffee with cream and everybody laughs at her and it makes no sense it's not that cowboys all drink black coffee and they think that coffee with cream is something to make fun of it's that they're drinking whiskey yeah, exactly. and they think yeah. you should be getting drunk with them because why are you in a bar yeah this series felt like a four kids dub you know what i mean Where they, <laughs> it, this yeah. whole series yeah. felt like that like yeah. don't go into a bar and and make them you know drink coffee all the names sound like the four kids versions of japanese <laughs> yeah. names yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh god by the way, do you know what uh, do you know what JJ's name actually is? What the JJ stands for? Chew. Oh my God, David. Uh, no, Chew <laughs> Chew. No, Jesse James. Because yeah, of course. Yeah, that yeah. yeah. From Pokemon. Yeah, Jesse and James. Team Rocket. <laughs> Blasting off again! <laughs> All right, but we're blasting off to the final verdict because we got 15 minutes on the clock. So y'all ready? Let's do it. So let's kick things off with six-word summary. We have quite a few of these, so let me get started. From Tucker, American through eyes of confused pedo. Aussie rat, I take no sass, but sarsaparilla. T. Wolfwood, Kitty Wild West is terribly boring. Chemi Chems, not One Piece, six bullets, which I think is a JoJo <laughs> reference. It is. Duke, it's mid. Read Peacemaker instead. Maxi B, sex criminal dreams of Lawless West. Xylon, root and tune, but mostly just two. <laughs> Peanut, love violence and a horny monkey. The BB King, PB the Dylan do the pew pew sound effect. <laughs> Albie, gun piece, that's all I got. Fuck, how did we never see gun piece? That's really yeah, that's good. Great, yeah. Oh, Albie, you did it. Blah Moo Moo says, Journey to the Gun Bland West. Generic man, tepid saddles and dancing with meh. Resident Warhammer nerd, <laughs> wild least of the wild east. And Link, yippee Kaye, more like yippee okay. I would say, yeah, yippee, not okay, but I appreciate it. Like, yeah, yippee, kaye, other buckets. <laughs> All right, but <laughs> Josh, what was your six word summary? So, my six word summary is Gun Blaze West teaching kids they can solve their problems with guns. I like it. I think that was more than six words, but it's okay. It's okay because the offer wouldn't have cared either. Gun Blaze West it, doesn't count yeah. to my word count, though. No, uh, it doesn't. Yeah, okay, okay. True, true, true. And then mine was as bland as St. Louis cuisine, because my God, have I ever been so unimpressed by the food of a city as I was when I was in St. Louis. <laughs> You know, David one time made fun of me for bringing up that I went to Italy. Like, oh, you're bragging about going over to over to Italy. And meanwhile, David, every chance he gets, just like, oh, yeah, I was over at this place and I had this cuisine. Ah, oh, yeah, you know, I'm about to go over to like fucking Fiji or whatever. I'm going to hang out in uh, Z New Zealand. I'm not or going to Fiji anymore. I'm just going to Disney Europe now. Oh, well, never mind then. You're right. I'll try and get you a copy of Chainsaw Man in French. Thank you so much, by the way, for the Italian chainsaw, man. Anyway. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I was in Italy. I really wanted to get the first volume of part five in Italian, but I couldn't find it. Oh, man. It's probably sold out is what it is. They only had like volume three. And I was like, I just oh, it's like you really only want part one. You ever maybe they view it as like offensive. <laughs> Speaking of offensive, Jordan, what's your six word summary? Huh. So this is cultural appropriation. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Now to the meat and potatoes. Josh, is this a flop or not? It's the floppiest flop of them all. Really? This is, this is certified. Certified flop. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Jordan? Certified flop. Seven days of WAP. Wait, <laughs> never mind. Is he singing you flop? Yeah, patrons, if we get a thousand dollars a month, Jordan will make F-L-O-P a WAP parody. <laughs> yeah. DJ <laughs> Flop. <laughs> DJ Flop, we the best! A little flop on the track. Congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, Jordan, I have to be honest with you. I think this is a flop and not a certified flop. I don't get it. We have read far worse. This series was bad, but it wasn't offensively bad. It was no focus I on. I disagree. It was no Tokyo Shinobi Squad. I think this is... I think it was at least Tokyo Shinobi Squad level. This was trash. <laughs> It was like eating a loaf of white bread, you know, or rice. Like, I didn't enjoy it, but I didn't get food poisoning. Oh, I had horrible food poisoning and was in the bathroom all day yesterday just trying to cleanse myself of this fucking Guns Blaze West <laughs> trash. This is garbage. I fucking hate this series. I don't understand why you think it's like just OK. I don't know. What can I say? Being around you has made me see that there's far worse things in this manga. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, Jordan, is this is this worse than School Judgment, which we have gone back and rectified as the worst thing we've ever read? And now that we finished it, it's almost as bad. The thing that separates School Judgment is that School Judgment is basically about being a pedophile, more yeah. or less. It's a manga for pedophiles. This is a manga by a pedophile, but it's not about being a pedophile, except for maybe one or two weird little things that, according to author's notes, actually aren't pedophilia. No, you're stupid for thinking that this girl's underage. How dumb of you. You're the dumb one here. I don't think it's quite as painful to view and experience as School Judgment was, but I think that it is on Build King's level. The thing about Build King is that it at least had some interesting, like, designs for, like, the mechs and stuff. There was some ambition with build king even though it sucked there's no ambition here at all there is never one point in this series where i feel that watsky even watsky i don't think there's a single point where he thinks he's doing anything well nobody involved here is happy with what's happening and the end result is just fucking garbage that nobody needs to read like kind of ever there's nothing you get out of this <laughs> yeah. understandable have a nice day thank you <laughs> so josh since you think people should not read the series what should someone check out instead it's another series that did kind of flop, and uh, it's by a, another popular, famous mangaka who's gone on, like I said, to create some pretty awesome shit. Again, similar-ish kind of setting, but Tite Kubo also wrote a series mm. before Bleach called Zombie Powder. We know about Zombie Powder! We know Zombie Powder all too well. I'm not saying it's a great series or anything, but I do think that it is a more interesting series, and a lot of the character designs, like even the character design for the main character, he apparently reworked it, and that's kind of where we get Grimjaw from. That makes so much sense. Yeah, That I makes mean, so much fucking sense, because I remember what he looks like, and yeah. Like, volume one cover of Zombie Powder, that same pose, that same kind of looking over the shoulder with his hand out, is the same pose that Grimjaw, that the cover of Bleach that he's on. By the way, you, you completely buried the lead here because you didn't mention that the main character has a chainsaw sword. That too. And that's at least more interesting than anything we saw in Guns Blaze West. Way more. A far more interesting series. And again, I love Kubo's art. And so I love to see the evolution of his art and uh, just to go back and to read Zombie Power. Although, like I said, it's not a perfect series, it's not a great series, but I think it's a far better use of your time than Guns Blaze West. Absolutely. Yes. And I will say, for the record, we will either cover Zombie Powder with Super Eye Patch Wolf, who I said he does not want to, <laughs> or it will be our last episode. Because we asked him and he said, I'll be on this show, but I don't want to do Zombie Powder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess you're actually, yeah, that will be our last ever episode will be zombie powder. <laughs> oh, God. It's so sad. You can go back to our first couple episodes and hear David mention like, no, we're not going to cover, cover zombie powder. We're saving that for Eye Patch Wolf. And then Eye Patch Wolf said he's not doing yeah, it. Yeah, he straight up said, no, I don't want to talk. I won't talk about zombie powder. I mean, I'm Aww. sure there's a, there's a way to, you know, there's a way he to. He said he'd be on the show, though. So, yeah, you just got to constantly kind of try to work in zombie powder the whole time. You know, whatever you do talk <laughs> about, just bring it back to zombie powder. Yeah, we'll pick like an arbitrary manga and then midway through it just transitions to zombie yeah, you know, powder. This reminded me a lot of zombie powder when I was reading it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just, I guess they stole designs. Hey, have you ever read the series called Zombie Powder? Yeah. Zombie Powder, great recommendation. Mine is, I'm actually not recommending a manga, so I'm going to do a show that, Jordan, I hope you've watched. If not, you need to watch it. The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr., which is Bruce Campbell being a cowboy in the Weird West. Oh. 
Yeah, I really do need to watch that. It's a yeah. fucking awesome show. I don't remember a lot of it, but there's a motorcycle gang for some reason <laughs> that he has to deal with. It's like motorcycles were just invented. <laughs> it's a one season wonder, but I think it is an absolute blast to watch Bruce Campbell in his prime being a cowboy. Love Bruce Campbell. If you don't love Bruce Campbell, you're not allowed on Shonen Flop. I'm sorry. It's just kind of how it works. Yep. You did reach out to me and ask me that, which I thought was a little odd, but uh, I'm yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people see it and they don't get it, but it's like, look, <laughs> you'll understand when you're on. Yep. But then how about you, Jordan? What's your recommendation? I mean, Trigun. Yeah. Anytime that you might think, man, Guns Blaze West kind of seems interesting. Just read Trigun. You'll get so much more after it. Jordan actually had a shirt during the recording that said, I really wish I was reading Trigun right now. <laughs> I legit wish I had that shirt in real life. Well, we can make it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I could. That's actually me right now. I just beat God of War and literally anything else I was doing, I was like, I really wish I was just playing God of War right now. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of things that we are shouting out, let's get into yeah. the shout outs because we already decided that this is not the worst thing we've read, even though it's close to Jordan's book. Yeah. We've made it to the end of the episode, Josh. So I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. This was a total blast. T. Wolfwood, shout out to you again for recommending Josh to be a guest on the show. We're definitely going to be excited to have Megan on as well and complete the set. But Josh, do you mind telling the audience a bit more about your show and where they can find it? Yeah, for sure. And first of all, thank you guys for having me. This was so much fun. I mean, you guys are a far more organized version <laughs> of, <laughs> of, of, of... You can thank David for that. Yeah, but you guys were great. This was awesome. Thanks again. Yeah, Volume 1 Podcast. We are available on like Spotify, everywhere you listen to podcasts, Apple Music, all that stuff. But we're mm-hmm. also on uh, YouTube. There's a video version of it as well. Uh, volume 1 Podcast on YouTube. You know, Like I said in the beginning, it's the first volume of a new series each week, but also deeper dives, uh, read-throughs, reactions to longer series. Yeah, we do stream dreams and stuff too we do all kinds of different stuff we try to shake it up our main types of videos are our volume one reviews and those deeper dives that we call volume duns <laughs> <laughs> i love it man have you guys done akane bashi yet because jordan and i just covered that for a piece of patreon content and that is a fun series to talk about we haven't yet no oh, well if you're ever looking for guess it's a series that's about acting but not the one made by this the person who sexually harassed right act age yeah the old yes uh... I, excuse me excuse me it's it act Oz. oh shut up I got to say, just really quick, what is, that is the most bizarre portrayal of acting and what an actor should be and do. I mean, that series was <laughs> was literally insane. Like, it was literally insane. And then to find out about the mangaka and what they were doing was the cherry on top. And people loved that series when it first came yeah. out, too. It was not for me from the beginning. That's fair. I also want to give a shout out to Marty, or one of our patrons, hey, who literally paid someone to make a new ending, an ending to act on. <laughs> He's posted links to that in the Discord, so I'll leave that to you to look into that. Wow. But hey, fans are going to be fans. Fuck yeah. But speaking, though, of fans, I'm a big fan of the fact that Jordan made a super awesome opening ending theme, being a great co-host and helping with the editing. Thank you, David. I also want to give props to Mer Lyle for the awesome cover art. You can find her online at Lyle Mer and Nigel for being our generous art benefactor. I want to give thanks to Dylan for assistance with editing. You can find his podcast, Anime Out of Context, at AnimeOutOfContext.com. I want to give thanks to Tucker for assistance with pronunciation, translation, and other miscellaneous research. Thanks to T-Root, Aussie Rat, and T-Wolfwood for being our awesome transcription volunteers, the Ghost Writers. You can find our transcripts on the site as they become available. Jordan, is there anything you want to add? Thank you, David, for everything that you do. Oh, thanks, babe. And you can find <laughs> us on Twitter at Shonen Flopcast and our website, ShonenFlop.com. We're also on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, or wherever else you get your podcast. And as I mentioned, be sure to join the Shonen Flop Discord. It's open to everyone, patron or not. Come hang out with us and talk about anime, games, or whatever else is on your mind. We also have a monthly movie night. I actually just hosted a intro to podcasting that was going to be this Wednesday. If you want to join us, Josh, it'll be a lot of fun. Me and Dylan yeah. from Anime Out of Context talk about, you know, how to come up with a podcast idea, how to record, and then how to promote, including the much requested question of hey how do you guys get such awesome guests on the show like the very person we're speaking to right now i'm flattered hey it's about sending lots of emails (laughs) and not being afraid of rejection it's just dating. Yeah. It's just dating. It's Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> if you've been enjoying our Patreon, you can have a ton of awesome perks like bonus episodes on Mago Chan, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, and Akambashi, as we talked about. Or you could even be listening to this recording right now. And I really do appreciate every patron. You can find us at patreon.com slash shonen flop. And on that note, we're just going to read off a few of our wonderful patrons. Jordan, should we be anime out of context inspired? Will we just give them <laughs> Gunblaze West names or not? Yeah, let's let's come up with American names for them. <laughs> All right. Is it, are you cool to join us for that, Josh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So I'll read it off and then just say whatever name ins- is inspires you. <laughs> so first of all, we have our two totally awesome Chainsaw Man patrons. We have Aw Cute. I woke up in a pool of my own blood. So their cowboy name uh, is uh, Christmas Tree Langston. Christmas Tree Langston. <laughs> yep. Next we have Pterodactyl Ghost. Terry the Dactyl Kid. <laughs> okay. I like that one. That was good. That's really good. Next up, we have our dolphin dad page, dolphin parent patron, which is tracking roving animals for all loving girls and raccoons. Wolfwood, which already sounds like a cowboy name to yeah, be honest. Yeah, but he'd be he'd be like a Dolph Dolph Whiskey, I think. You know, I mean, it's literally a name from Trigun, which is yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. Wolfwood. That is yeah. fair. <laughs> so it's like Travis Saint Wolfwood. Next up, we have our kings of the forest. We have Albie, Oscar, Albertson, uh huh, Jackal. Uh, Albert Chadpool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then we have Cram. I think his name is Mayo Biscuit. Cracker. Mayo Cracker, yes. Mayo, Mayo Cracker. Cracker. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a name for a white guy in a black exploitation movie. Yeah, you just, oh my you, God. Yeah, you just <laughs> wrecked him right now. Dude, you just eviscerated that guy. Next up, we have Gabe Landau. <laughs> so, hi, Gabe. Well, th- this would obviously be um, Sam Giblandow. Giblandow? <laughs> Ka- yeah, like Kablamdow. Like it's the sound of a gun, you yeah, know? Kablamdow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Jake Rip, Andrew Galloway. This is a uh, Herschel Fist. I like that. I like I like Herschel. I like that. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> that actually sounds like the name of a character from a juice plantation film, <laughs> like the Hebrew <laughs> Hammer. <laughs> Yes! Oh, wow. we could write that, actually. That's a lot because we're Jewish. Oh, Herschel Fist. <laughs> Herschel Fist, yes, versus the communist werewolves. <laughs> Herschel Fist, Fisterburger. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, next up we have Mark. Uh, uh, his, his name is... Um, mm. Quick draw. Yeah. First name never misses. <laughs> yeah, his name is never misses Mark. Oh, I, that's perfect. That's hey, perfect. Hey, hey, there we go. And then uh, we got Marty, aka Marty the Kid. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And then uh, Rachel, my lovely girlfriend, aka Rachel the Kid. Yes, Rachel, Rachel the, the Kid, because she's about the height of a child. Because uh, <laughs> my girlfriend's less than five <laughs> feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, Rachel. Small Gia. Yes. That feel when small G up. All right, next up we have Scarlet Myrmidon. Shout out. Scarlet's like the name of like a femme fatale for a, a Western. Lady Scarlet. Yeah, Lady Scarlet. Scarlet Myrmidon already is a very strong Old West American TM name. So I agree with you guys. Yes. And then we have Solomon Martinez. Again, kind of works, actually. Yeah, just, that just sounds like a name from a Western. <laughs> Solomon Martinez is just an actual name from a real Western movie, it feels <laughs> yeah. like. All right, next up we have T. How about T for Tombstone? Okay, okay. Nice, nice, nice. Finally, Josh, I'm going to leave this one to you for you. Just give us a name. The BB King, BB The. What's their cowboy name? <laughs> the BB King? The BB The? Yeah. Uh, 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 the BB, the BB blaster. I don't know. The I don't BB know. blaster. There you go. They use BBs instead of bullets. Okay. Yeah. Alternate name. Uh, BB the kid. Kid the BB. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just add the kid onto everybody's name. There you go. It's fucking all west. That's gonna be our Patreon shout out stories. We just are gonna say what's everyone cowboy name and we'll be really lazy about it. It's the kid, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. But that is our wonderful list of patrons. I also am going to play a trailer here. I sacrificed my dark magician to bring forth Sugoi Summit. Thank you, Yami, and let us introduce ourselves. My name is Isabel. And I'm Dylan. We are an anime gaming couples podcast. I'm a 20-year veteran of the culture, and I'm leading my wife through all the amazing worlds, everything anime and video game-wise that she hasn't experienced yet. Come pick us out. Thank you so much for joining us. Tune in next Monday as it is our two year anniversary. So we are rereading Golem Hearts. So instead of a chibi episode, we are ranking all 50 series we have read so far. I've created a tier list generator using them all. I will post it in the show notes if people want to make their own. Oh, Jordan yes. and I am sure we're going to have lots of fights. I can't believe we're going to have 50 series to try and put into tiers. So stay tuned for that. And then, as we said, we're going to be talking about Golem Hearts the next week. So this has been David. This has been Jordan. Apparently, we're going to be fighting about this series but whatever you sure are (laughs) (laughs) and this has been josh and you've been listening to shonen flop keep on flopping partners flop on the track (laughs) 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 (
<laughs> we the DJ Khaled, we the flop. <laughs> we the, the, the floppest. All right, I'm done. Bye, everybody. I love you. <laughs>